Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. This is John, and today I'd like to talk about uh, how we measure distance, uh, or how we think about distance in astronomy. And I'll start it off with a little anecdote that you can probably um, quickly appreciate. Uh, the other day I was asking for directions on how to get somewhere, and uh, I said, well, uh, how far is this place from here? And uh, the fellow proceeded to tell me, oh, it's about 20 minutes, just go down the road and you'll be right there, no problem, just head right on down the road. I said, um, okay, thank you, uh, how, about, how far is it? Hey, no traffic, 20 minutes, tops, no problem. Okay, so what went on there? I, I did get some useful information from him. In fact, probably the most useful piece of information, which is it'll take me 20 minutes to drive from where I am to get to where I want to go. Um, he didn't tell me the distance. He didn't tell me the speed. And in fact, one of the things is probably easier uh, for, the, for people to think of uh, the time it might take to do something rather than think about the distance. The time to travel somewhere took me a day to go there. It was a five hour plane flight. Rather than um, I, it was a 2400 mile plane flight or I had to travel 360 miles by Amtrak. It took me a whole day. So on and so forth. So in many ways you can equate time to distance. It turns out that that's how it's done uh, in astronomy. And the uh, special speed that ties uh, distance and time together is the speed of light. Speed of light is a fundamental constant. It's a, a very, very fast speed compared to anything we can travel at. It's 186,000 miles per second. That corresponds to uh, 300,000 kilometers per second for those of you who like metric units. Uh, to give you some perspective of how fast that speed is, imagine that I had a light beam and I'm standing here in California and I can shine that light beam to New York and that light would hit the, the, the mirror in New York. I have a mirror in New York. It would bounce back to my place in California and it will bounce back and forth. How many times would it reach each coast in one second? Turns out that in one second that light beam will reach each coast 75 times. In other words, about 150 times it's going to bounce off the mirrors. It's an astoundingly fast speed given our normal context. You'll soon see that it's a very slow speed when we think about the size of the universe and boy we wish we could travel faster than light because if we can't uh, we're really confined to a rather small area of the universe. So now let's uh, talk about uh, relating light and distance. Uh, you may recall we talked about the speed of light in the context of how long did it take light leaving the sun to reach the earth. Well, let's, let's compute it. The, uh, time it. the distance of the sun is about 93 million miles from earth and light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Well, if I take um, 93 million miles and I divide that by 186,000 miles per second, if you do that division, you will get 500 seconds, which corresponds to about 8 minutes plus a number of seconds. So it's about 8 minutes, 20 seconds. So you can think of the distance as 8 minutes and 20 light seconds. In other words, it took light, um, I'm sorry, it took light 500 seconds to reach us, or 8.3 light minutes. Or you can think of it as 93 million miles. Uh, when we get to large distances, the distances get so big, it, it's, it's too complicated to think of uh, kilometers and other things. You'd be talking about trillions of kilometers, and it just boggles the mind. Somehow it's easier for us, for some reason, to think of time, and that's really where the, the measurement of light year came from. So let's give an example of an astronomical object using light years. How far is it from us? Um, the nearest star to us is uh, and drum as uh, Alpha Centauri, its distance is about 4.2 light years. What that means is light leaving that star will take 
4.2 years to reach Earth. So if this is Earth and this is a star, light leaving that star is going to take 4.2 years to reach us. Okay, that's quite a long time for light to travel, but that's a relatively small time on astronomical time scales. We live in something called the Milky Way galaxy. It's a huge galaxy, it contains uh, well over 100 billion stars. Most recent estimates are 400 billion stars, and it's a very large structure. The center of the galaxy, which we'll talk much more about later on, turns out to be about 30,000 light years from where we are today. In other words, it would take light leaving the center of the galaxy the Milky Way galaxy 30,000 years to reach us. That's a time scale that's longer than uh, human civilization as we know it. Humans maybe were just beginning to draw pictures at the time on, on walls. Some of the oldest uh, cave paintings we see are more like on the order of 10,000 years. And that's still a close astronomical distance. Um, and that another interesting distance is the distance to the closest galaxy outside of our own galaxy, turns out that that distance is about 2 million light years, i.e. light leaving that galaxy today will reach Earth in, t in about 2 million years. Or to think of it another way, the light from that galaxy today left uh, Andromeda when long before humans were roaming the Earth, or if humans we were some much more primitive form than we are today. Homo sapiens weren't quite on the planet yet. So that light le left that we see today is older than any human ever on Earth has ever been. So that concept of distance and time is, is very important and I want you to really uh, make sure you understand that. So summarizing here, the speed of light is a certain value, it's a very fast value, 300,000 kilometers per second, fast on a human time scale, you certainly couldn't drive that fast or fly that fast. Uh, and we measure distance by taking the speed of light and multiplying it by the time it would take the light to go between uh, one point and another point. So, for example, the nearest star it takes 4.2 uh, years for the light to reach us, therefore the distance equals 4.2 light years. So I think you got this concept down, it's pretty simple, but it's uh, going to be very important as we discuss uh, the material more and more. That's it for today, take care, and I'll uh, be talking to all of you soon. Thank you very much.